Hello and welcome to a new episode of Laravel Core Adventures, where we take pieces of our favorite PHP framework and together figure out how they work in the background. This is level number one of the Laravel request lifecycle. So let's dive right in. So when we want to learn more about how Laravel works, the request lifecycle is the perfect place to start. It defines what is happening between an HTTP request to our application till the response, which we will return back to the user, like here on the Laravel welcome page. Let's just refresh it. Yeah, this was one lifecycle. In level number one, we're going to take a look at the index.php file to find out more about that. Everything starts in this file, which you can find under the public directory. Here. Every call entering your application will go through this file. So this is actually a quite important one. But actually the content is quite clear to read. It only consists of a few lines here. So let's go through each of them and find out what is happening. First, a constant called Laravel start is defined with the current timestamp. This can be useful for debugging with Laravel Telescope, for example. The framework itself is not using it, by the way. Then down here, we're going to load the composer auto load file, which holds the information for all the classes of our application. For example, if we want to create a new user class, it does not work before this line. As you can see, the class cannot be found. But afterwards, we don't have that problem. So that's quite useful. So we don't have to do this ourselves because that would be quite annoying to set up all these classes and require them in our script. Then the framework gets booted and stored as an application instance, or you can also call it the service container. Behind the scenes, a few things are happening here, like all the application path gets stored, the kernels get registered, as well as the core service provider for the event log or routing system. And we are also registering and storing core classes inside of the container that we can then use later. Okay, and now that the application has been set up, we can finally run it. And we do this by getting a new instance of the kernel class and running the handle method on it. As a parameter, we are providing a request object. This will already return us the correct response instance. But before I want to show you the request object. So let's copy that here and dump that out. We don't see too much here, but at least we have the request URI, the HTTP method, as well as the headers. And that's what's being used inside the kernel to generate the actual response object. Let's check that out as well. And this already includes our HTML document for the welcome site and as well as the headers which you can find then here. Okay, let's go back, get rid of this and then through the send method our response will be returned to the browser. At this point we can already see the site and we are almost done. There's just one line left here in this file where we run the terminate method on the kernel instance. And if you don't know that, we can check that out inside the Laravel documentation. And here we can see how we can define the terminate method on a middleware. And this is useful if we want to perform some tasks after the response has already been prepared. For example, Laravel is using it for the session middleware to store some session data in the storage. And that's already the end of the Laravel request lifecycle. In level number two, we're going to dig a little bit deeper to find out what is happening inside the HTTP kernel class. 
Stay tuned and see you.